Everyone knows that visiting New Zealand is an unforgettable trip of a lifetime. Just don't get sick like I did as soon as we landed in Auckland. We were planning to do a trip of both the North and South Islands, but we had to cancel it due to my illness. But you know what? Even though our trip didn't go to plan, we still visited a lot of amazing places in the North Island and I'd like to share those places with you. A trip to the North Island of New Zealand won't be complete without visiting the beautiful Coromandel Peninsula in the Waikato region. During our drive to the coastal town of Coromandel, we came across the Rapparua Gardens. Even on a rainy day, we had fun during our visit here. There was a vast variety of plants, flowers, wildlife and trees, and it even features a waterfall. As soon as we arrived at Coromandel, we enjoyed the views of the ocean and headed to a bake shop that had one of New Zealand's favorite food, pies. And of course, delicious fish and chips with an amazing soda you can only find here, LNP, which is kind of like Sprite. Coromandel is definitely a cute little town worth a visit. Rotorua is probably one of the most popular destinations on the North Island, and for a good reason. Waiotapu Thermal Park is a geothermal wonderland known for its bubbling mud pools, geysers, and distinctive sulfuric aroma. We enjoyed our, our trip here, but I have to admit that the sulfuric smell of rotten eggs was a little bit hard to bear. And I swear, I did not use Photoshop here. The water was really this neon green. In Mamaku, a little town in Waterua, we hopped on one of these little self-driving rail carts courtesy of rail cruising. It is a unique and scenic way to explore the country's breathtaking landscapes on an old railway track. It starts in Mamaku and takes you to Tarokenga before turning around and heading back to Mamaku again. An audio tour provides you with a fascinating story behind the railway. On the road again! Following our trip to Rotorua, we then headed to Waitomo and our first stop was the Marokopa Falls, a majestic waterfall cascading 35 meters down limestone cliffs surrounded by lush native bush. We then spent the night at Waitomo and just enjoyed a beautiful and quiet night. It was perfect for taking pictures of the Milky Way and watching the sunrise. The following morning, we headed to Waikato to visit the caves with its captivating displays of stalactites. But the highlight of this visit was at Waitomo Glowworm Caves. This is a stop that you shouldn't miss as it is truly one of a kind and seeing the glow worms up close and afar as they dot the caves with neon blue lights will truly amaze you. We weren't allowed to touch the caves, but our guide had a broken off piece that we could touch. So they reckon this rock helped come. And did you know that it takes thousands, even millions of years for these stalactites to form? Especially during the high season, this attraction is extremely popular. I highly recommend that you book your ticket online to save you the hassle. Even if you're not a fan of the Lord of the Rings franchise, I still recommend visiting the Hobbiton movie set. Heading to Hobbiton allows you to immerse yourself in this fantasy land. 
and the story behind its creation is extremely fascinating. During your tour, you will see the gardens and houses prevalent in the movies. Many of the movie's original props can still be seen here, and you can even experience having a taste of the fine ale at Hopton. If you wish to learn more about Hobbiton, watch our video on it. It will have lots of the details that you need to know before visiting this world-famous attraction. By the way, we have so many more destinations and adventures to share with you. Don't miss out! Hit that subscribe button to be notified of our upcoming videos. The next place we ventured to is Wangare, where we enjoyed its beaches like Waipu and Langs Beach. Wangare is also home to the famous Wangare Falls, a popular spot for nature walks and picnics. A touching tribute to the 51 victims of the 2019 massacre also lies here, where 51 trees were planted to commemorate each life lost. The falls were originally known as Otiahu, and in the 1920s, the land was bought by Archibald Clapham, who bought the land to prevent commercial exploitation of the falls. The Wangare Businessmen's Association raised funds in 1946 to buy the land on behalf of the citizens of Wangare and turned it into a public park. Okere Falls is a small town located 21 kilometers from Rotorua. It is a popular spot for fishing, rafting and zip lining and is known for its beautiful lakeside and waterfalls. We walk down the pathway to see the three thundering waterfalls in a secret glowworm cave that didn't seem to have any glowworms when I went to see it. One of the things that I enjoyed the most during our trip was the scenic and slow drives wherever we went. Since I couldn't really do anything active as I was still recovering during my visits to these destinations, I just enjoyed taking in the stunning scenery as we drove from one place to another. And check out these cool buildings too. <laughs> Our next stop is truly unique. And again, this video has not been color enhanced or anything. The water in Hookah Falls is definitely this color. A bright shade of turquoise and blue. Huka Falls is a stunning natural attraction located near Taupo. The falls are formed as the Waikato River narrows abruptly, creating a powerful rush of water that forcefully and noisily passes through a narrow gorge. Huka Falls drains to Lake Taupo. Known for its amazing swimming waters, it is the largest freshwater lake in Australasia and is about the size of Singapore.
It is important to learn about the Maori culture when visiting New Zealand, and we started our visit to the Auckland War Memorial Museum by watching a truly dynamic and educational Maori performance of the Hakka and their native songs. The Auckland War Memorial Museum is an amazing museum worth visiting. With its rich collection of Maori and Pacific treasures, it is the best way to know more about the Maori, their history, and their links to the world, including the state of Hawaii. It is free to visit, but donations are accepted too. Unfortunately, Adrian and I did not have enough time to fully explore Auckland, but when we did, we made it a point to visit the Auckland Fish Market, where you can find plenty of options for delicious and fresh food. Queen Street is the main shopping and commercial thoroughfare in the Auckland CBD or Central Business District. It is a vibrant street named after Queen Victoria with its countless restaurants and shops. At the end of the street is a shopping mall called Little Queen Street. For some reason, Adrian liked posing underneath the sign. The North Island of New Zealand has so much to offer when it comes to amazing destinations and adventures. Too bad my illness took up most of our trip, but hey, I guess it gives us a reason to come back. Thanks again for joining us, and if you haven't yet, please click subscribe and we would love to share more travel tips, destinations, and our adventures with you. Stay curious and keep exploring. We can't wait to see you again soon.